hello everyone very welcome to the channel in this video i am going to show you how you can fine tune mistral's newly released mistral small model on your own data set we will be using the tool unsloth for it which is one of the simplest and fastest tool to fine tune the models on your own data set it is quite easy to use too and i will also be showing you a step by step google collab on t4 gpu as how to do it and don't worry about the commands i'm going to give you the link to the notebook so you can also try it along if you don't know what this mistral small model is or unsloth is please search my channel i already have covered both of them in great detail in various videos as you can see on your screen so this is for the mistral small and if you want to learn about unsloth just search with unsloth and you should be able to find heaps of videos on it so this mistral small model this is mistral's latest enterprise grade small model which is an upgrade of the previous mistral small version 24 model it is available under mistral's research license and it offers flexibility to choose a cost efficient fast yet quite reliable option for use cases such as translation summarization sentiment analysis and other tasks that do not require full-blown general purpose model in 70 billion size or so though it's they call it a small model but it's not that small by the way and we have already covered that bit in my uh, this video where i have shown you the mistral small it is around 22 billion parameter model so it is not as small as you would think so as i mentioned i will be using unsloth to get this fine tune on custom data set Unsloth is quite fast because all the kernels writ are written in OpenAI's Triton language and it also supports manual backprop engine. There is 0% loss in accuracy and there are no approximation method. The cool thing is that not only it works on NVIDIA's GPU but also it works on CPU, some of the AMD GPUs and the list goes on and on. It also works on Linux and if you want to use it on windows you would need to install windows subsystem for linux and that is a way to use it on the windows system it supports both 4-bit and 16-bit qlora and lora fine tuning lora is low rack adaptation where you simply just freeze the original weights of the model and then add some layers and fine tune those layers as per your own data it is open source it trains five times faster and there are a lot of other things about unslots which you can check it on there github repo plus on the channel which i already have shared how you can search it out so now let me take you to my google collab and from there we are going to start installing it and then we will see how the fine tuning works so this is my google collab so all you need to do is just go to collab.google.com and then sign in with your gmail account for free account and then you can use this free gpu just click on change runtime type t4 gpu and there you go you have your free gpu from google quite generous of them let's install unsloth and then we are just upgrading it and also installing it from the source so let's wait for it to get installed shouldn't take too long so the prerequisites are done next up let's import the libraries which we have installed from unsloth and then we are specifying the maximum sequence length here as you can see which is the number of tokens for input text then we are specifying the data type for the model usually it is um, int4 or float32 for the default one and then we are loading the model in 4-bit that is enabling the model to be loaded in 4-bit which is int8, int8 precision for efficient memory usage and then we are specifying our mistral small instruct model from unsloth so let me run it it is going to take a bit of a time it is going to download the model here so let's wait for it to get started and it has started downloading the model that there are three shards of it so let's wait for it to get downloaded and the model is downloaded and also it is now loaded onto our GPU. Next up, let's specify the LoRa configuration. 
so if you look at this code what is happening here is we are uh, applying this configuration with LoRa which is low rank adaptation to specific modules controlling the rank scaling and dropout or in other words we are doing parameter efficient fine tuning here it is a technique of fine tuning of LLMs and this technique uses LoRa in this case if I take you through these Parameter. So what is happening is that we are using fast language model to apply a PEFT or parameter efficient fine tuning. We are specifying our model. Then we are specifying the rank of the low rank approximation for LoRa matrices, which is 16. And then we are specifying that these modules are the ones where we need to apply this LoRa or the low rank adaptation. So for example, this Q proj, K proj, V and O proj these are the query key value and output projection layers within the model then we have gate projection layer and then we have up and, and up and down projection layers and then this is all the lora configuration the lora alpha and lora dropout so lora alpha is the scaling factor for lora matrix lora dropout is a dropout rate for lora matrix zero means there will be no dropout then we are saying that we are disabling the bias terms for LoRa matrix and then for optimization and regularization we are using uh, this gradient checkpointing to unsloth uh, and then this is a random state which is just a random seat for reproducibility and here we are not using RS LoRa which is basically the randomized subset LoRa and then similarly we are not setting the loft queue so it means that no configuration is being provided for low rank fine tuning quantization. So let me run it here and it is going to set this configuration. You see it has packed those layers which we have specified here. So now we have our model ready. Next step is to specify our data set. Now this is a point where you can use your own data set or in this example I'm just going to use alpaca data set and I'm just simply specifying its data sets template that instruction input and response will be the format and then we are specifying end of sequence token so that it will end when the generation is finished we are formatting the data set as per our own example and from there we are loading the data set and i'm just going to go with this uh, alpaca clean with the split is train and just keeping it simple and as i said you can replace it with your own data set make sure that uh, you also specify the pro template accordingly and if you don't know how to specify how to format and how to create this custom data set then please just my search my channel i have done exclusive videos on data sets from various angles and you can see that we already have done this data set formatting and splitting okay next step is to specify the training let me paste it here so you see what we are doing here is we are simply using the hugging face sft trainer library uh, which is uh, that part of their trl and we are only doing 60 steps here so let me try to explain what is happening here while i run it so i just run it here and while it runs so here you can see we are specifying our model we are specifying our tokenizer our data set which we already have done above and from there we are saying that we are only taking the text data field and this is a field in our data set and this is a maximum sequence length the number of tokens and from there we are setting this data set numproc this is the number of processes for data set loading and we are setting packing to false what it means is that we are disabling sequence packing and this is faster for the shorter sequences and these are all the training arguments so for example and this per device train batch size this is for batching and gradient configuration batch size is primarily number of samples processed together and then this is a gradient accumulation step so it combines the gradients from multiple batches now gradient is simply the it simply measures the models error derivative that how much far the models output is from the actual expected values so gradient accumulation steps are four here as you can see so and this reduces the memory usage and in increases the computation 
warm up steps these are uh, this gradually increases the learning rate and it prevents the overshooting or overfitting and overfitting simply means that the model is too complex and learns the training data's noise and specifics that results in poor performance now as you can see i'm just specifying max step 60 or just to keep it short or you could just put it number of epoch the full pass to one it is going to take longer but the performance will be better and the model will be more grounded in your data set and then from there we are simply using the optimizer as adam w bit which is the um, which optimizer is simply used to update the model weights and weights are simply the parameters or that which model learns during training so and then there are some fp16 bf bf, um, BF 16 which are the precision and hardware it for example 16 bit floating point reduces memory and increases the speed similarly we are using some of the other stuff like scheduler type now this lr scheduler is a learning rate scheduler it adjusts the model's learning rate and we are specifying it to linear it means that it decreases the learning rate linearly and then there are some logging and other stuff you can see it is tra for tracking training process and to uh, for logging the matrix regularly plus it is again for reproducibility or random value so this is what it is doing and you can see that it has already done it the only step which remains now is to actually start the training and which you can simply do with this trainer dot train which and trainer we already have defined and this is a process which is going to take um, quite a bit of a time because it depends upon your gpu and that is where your vram your gpu plays a pivotal role because t4 gpu doesn't have much vram because you know it's a free one just for learning and stuff but this is the last step of the training so if you have a good gpu this will be way more quicker and all of these uh, companies and individuals who create the models they either use gpus with like 80 gp vram or more uh, likely multiple gpu clusters to get the training done and still it takes days weeks or even months for larger models especially for pre-training for the training from scratch so you see now it has started the training it is going to through all the 60 steps and as it progresses the model learns this loss will keep decreasing as you can see it is already decreasing and if you look at this training progress you will see that the training loss sometimes comes down and then sometime it goes up and that is perfectly normal so what is happening here is that sometimes you see it is 65 it comes down to 50 and then shoots up to again 99 the reason why it is happening is that model is adjusting to the new parameters it is exploring different optimization paths and it is overcoming local minima also it is primarily it is learning patterns in the data and adapting to the task and this process is also sometimes called as loss oscillation or a non-monotonic loss trajectory um, so it is perfectly normal so don't worry about it and you can see that it is ultimately coming down just in case if it keeps going up and up and up and never comes down that that is the problem or it just plateaus it doesn't really goes down or up it means that you are just wasting your fine tuning you should stop but as long as it is making good progress which in this case uh, seemingly it is then you can just carry it on so you see that it is uh, there are 60 step and it has just reached to step number 18 as of now all the training steps are done and you can see that the ultimate loss is just at 0.73 which is quite decent i would say next up you can just simply do the inference with your new fine-tuned model and you can use this alpaca format data set and then it is going to give you the output here and we are just asking it to complete or continue the fibonacci sequence and you can see that it has done the completion of your prompt now if you, in order to save it locally the model i mean the new fine-tuned model 
you can even you can simply use save pre-trained with whatever model name you want to give with the tokenizer or if you want to push it to hugging face you would need to grab a right token from hugging face website which you can grab from your profile it's a free token and then put your token here and here and then push both the model and tokenizer uh, to the hugging face repository and from there you can opt to share it with the world so that's it guys i hope that you enjoyed it this is how easy it is to fine tune this a mistral small model with unsloth if you want to learn about more of these please search my channel and you will find plenty of resources if you have any questions please feel free to ask them in the comments if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you are already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thank you for watching